Hi! In the next few videos, you'll get to know PageGit from a developer's perspective. We'll start by going through the file structure of the PageGit package. What you see here is a PageGit installation on my local server. Let's have a look at some of the files on the root level. We'll not look at every single file, but only at the ones which are important for the basic understanding of how PageKit works. First, the config.php. This file is created when you install PageKit. It contains your database credentials and some other settings. The index.php is the main entry point for PageKit. It takes care of responding to all requests sent from the browser to PageKit. There's a file called PageKit, which actually is a PHP file as well, even though it doesn't end with .php. This is the PageKit command line interface. If you have PHP installed on your system, use your terminal to run this file. It offers several commands which are interesting mostly when you create your own extensions. Now let's have a look at the different subdirectories. First, the app folder, which contains the actual PHP source code of PageKit. You yourself won't change or create files in here, but let's have a look at the general structure. The assets folder contains front-end dependencies like jQuery, Vue.js, and UIKit. You will know jQuery as the popular DOM manipulation library. UIKit is a front-end framework which provides styling and functionality for web interfaces. And Vue.js is a JavaScript library around the model view view model pattern. All of these are used for the PageKit backend interface. When you create your own extensions, you are of course free to use whatever front-end tools you want, but as these libraries are present by default, it's a good idea to use them. For example, create your markup with UIKit and build your backend interaction using Vue.js. The console folder contains the code for the command line tool that I've just shown you. The installer folder, of course, contains the PageKit installer. Now on to the modules folder. This one contains many single folders, each representing a single module. You can think of modules as the single building blocks of PageKit. Each module contains a file called index.php. This file returns a PHP array, which acts as the module definition for PageKit. This is the entry point where the module can register and use PageKit functionality. You will see this module pattern in several places across PageKit. We will also follow the same module pattern when building an extension or even a theme. The app system folder contains the code for the PageKit backend. As you can guess from the index.php, even the backend is built using the module pattern. And in the modules folder, we find even more modules. This is because a module itself can provide submodules. This makes it easy to split code into single self-contained units. So as you can see, the module pattern is a very central concept and you'll see it more than once. Understanding it means you'll understand most parts of PageKit at the same time. Now, lastly, in this folder, the vendor directory will be familiar to most PHP developers. It contains the dependencies managed by Composer. PageKit is built using Symfony components, so you'll find these here alongside other PHP libraries. Let's close these folders and go back to the root directory. There are three folders left that we will have a look at. The packages folder contains all installed packages. They are sorted by vendor name, so the PageKit core packages are located in the PageKit subdirectory. A package is anything you can install, for example, from the PageKit marketplace. It's a single folder that has at least two files. First, the composer.json, which is the package definition and includes metadata such as the package name and version number. Second, the index.php, which is the entry point for the package functionality. You might have guessed it. Yes, this again is a module definition. As you can see, both extensions and themes are packages in PageKit and they live alongside in the same folder. The storage folder contains files that users upload from the browser. And then lastly, the TMP folder, which contains several kinds of temporary files including the cache. 
You should now have a basic understanding of the patch kit folder structure. You've seen the structure of existing code plus the packages directory. The packages directory is the place for you as a developer to get started. And we'll do that in the next video.